and welcome back to this week's edition of EB Sports and Embroidery, Chatting with Chip with Barton College football coach Chip Hester. I am Wilson Times Sports Editor Paul Durham. And Coach, we have uh, we, we got some things to talk about, I guess, after that Tusculum game. It was a tough day for your guys, a 41-17 loss. And, uh, you know, obviously you made some early mistakes and they made you pay for it. But I thought the real takeaway of the game was they took away, as you said, uh, their head coach, Jerry Odom, former defensive guy, loves to take away what the other team loves to do. And they did a good job of that. Um, how were they able to – I assume you've had a chance to sort of oh, yeah. go over it with a fine-tooth comb. Specifically, how were they able to deny you guys those rushing lanes and those um, – there's gaps uh, Saturday. So football and especially running the, running the football is all about, it's a numbers game. And uh, so obviously if, if you've got a quarterback that's playing quarterback, the defense has got one more than you have to defend. Uh, and then, then you start talking about which side of the, which side of the offense are they coming from. And so they were doing a really good job of what we call cutting corners. So uh, a corner who's lined up on a on an offensive uh, wide receiver will cut in and for run support the safety is going to be over the top and so it, it comes from a little bit different area uh, they were doing some run line stunts uh, but basically it's a numbers game so they're bringing more numbers to the to the party uh, than you can block and so uh, the answer to that is you got to be able to throw the football a little bit more and um, and and I thought. You know, we 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 hit some passes, uh, but we didn't hit enough, and uh, and so we've you know again, I've we, you and I've talked about it many times that we're we're maturing as an offense, but we're not there yet, and so we're not as efficient uh, doing doing what we need to do, and so uh, you got to give Tuscan credit. I thought they were athletically, they were really good, and they had a great scheme. And uh, it, it took us a while to get going and uh, finally got some passes going and uh, hit, hit some big plays. But uh, we've got to be able to take advantage of what a defense presents to us. And we weren't able to do that. And I think the biggest thing also is it was uh, another second straight week of a slow start. And, uh, and, and two really big special teams mistakes really led to 14 points. And now your, your back's against the wall early. Yeah, that sort of took away what you guys wanted to do for sure. But even so, you weren't able to move it. Not you know, as an as an addition to that, coach, I thought they did a really good job of defending the pass as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. They made it really tough on you guys. You weren't terrible throwing the ball. No. Maybe not quite as sharp as you needed to be to overcome that run disparity. But um, they just they. Like I said, they, there seem to be 15, 16 <laughs> orange jerseys on the other side of the ball all day. Yeah, they, they played well. They're, they're a good football team. And I think, you know, what what we need to re realize or remember is they won the championship last year in the spring. Right. Uh, they, they had played and lost three games to Lenore Ryan, uh, Wingett, and uh, Newberry. And all those teams are in the regional rankings. So, and they weren't, they were close. They were nip and tuck. And I, you know, the thing that I'm proud of with our guys is and come out in the second half and it was, it was a 14, 14 tie basically in the second half. So we came out and, uh, and fought and battled and things like that. But when it's all said and done, hopefully we've learned some lessons. Uh, you know, we've got to, we've got to play better. And, uh, you know, I think our guys, I think they're understanding that. You know, we talked uh, after the Winget game that uh, it was it was a great win, uh, but we did we still didn't feel like that we're that we we're where we need to be on a consistent basis in this conference, and uh, so I think I think it's redoubled our efforts. We've had a good week of practice so far. Our, our attitude's been really uh, where it needs to be, and uh, and I you know we're going to talk about being mentally tough and uh, and being more consistent and and continue to develop. I think that's what we need to do. Yeah, and I think you talked about you know playing a team like that requires some some adaptability, and uh, you know that was that was something as as we said every snap every game gives you that experience that your team needs, and and wants to take moving on. So it sounds like that's what you guys are going to take from that game is, you know, yeah. you've had that experience. Now I don't think y'all played a team quite like that. Maybe similar in defense, but not quite. Is, yeah, they, is pushing. They, going into it, they they do some different things. It's a three man front, but it's but but 
the way they play it, they've got a, a, a Sam linebacker, uh, number 48, uh, if you, or 33, and, and sometimes he'll line up right. inside. Sometimes he'll line up outside. Well, Ryan McIntyre. Right. <laughs> and uh, in, in that – that changes your blocking schemes a little bit, and uh, and you know it, it just. And then they've got they've got really fast linebackers. I thought they did a great job of flowing over the top, and uh, and and I thought they fit our runs pretty well. And so we didn't have enough good answers on Saturday. Um, you know, I think again, coaching wise, uh, I've got to figure out new ways to attack uh, guys like that, and so. Uh, you know, I, I told the guys this week, me as a coach, I've got to get better. Uh, you know, we, I think we got outplayed, we got outcoached, and um, and so you give, you tip your hat, and you try to get yourselves better and learn from it, and, and hopefully next time you see those guys, you'll be better better for the experience that you've you just you just had. No doubt. When you know they held the number eleven rushing team in the country, twenty five rushing yards on the game, so definitely tip of the hat to Absolutely. Tusculum. Moving on, though. Um, <laughs> Moving on, right. Got a big game this Saturday. Back home. Home sweet home in Truist Stadium. Uh, homecoming. And, um, you know, it's I, I guess it's ironic, Barton football, first fall homecoming. I don't even know if y'all did the homecoming in the spring. It would have been I pointless, I guess, to try it then. But this is a big game. Bluefield State, uh, an opponent coming in. And I guess what, more than Bluefield State, I just really want to ask you, you guys have – had a lot of traditions that you've kind of had to start on your own. Some you brought with you, um, and I see some of the guys doing certain things. Um, before the game, they could kneel, say a little prayer in the end zone, um, the bulldog walk. Um, what are some of the – and I always ask these guys every week, a lot of them love this stuff. And for yeah. college football, if anything, it's all about the pageantry. Absolutely. Um, you've been doing this a long time. What are some of the things that you like the most about what you've got, and what can people expect, this, you know, Saturday homecoming, Barton – Tradition. Well, I, you know, I, I think that that bulldog walk has become something pretty special. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's something that our guys look forward to, and uh, you know, when you when you turn that corner and you see folks there, uh, and and I think I, I hope that people in the community and our parents and our uh, the cheer team, it's a it's a point that we can call kind of rally together, and uh, and and I tell you the other. The other big thing that's that's happening with that is we, we take our recruits on a tour and we end up back at the the bell tower and so they are able to see all that happening and uh, so it's just got a good feel it sets the tone uh, and, and they know when when we get to that bell tower uh, it's time to lock in because we got a game coming uh, you know I think our guys are, are are enjoying playing in front of a home crowd uh, there's been great energy and I hear uh, that the there's it might even be a, a, a sellout, and uh, wow. so this this weekend. So that's great. Um, I think people are excited to see what Barton football is all about, and the alumni are anxious to see. They they probably heard a little bit, uh, but uh, our guys are excited about it, and uh, and I hope you know what we've talked about is for, you know for I mean I think we've been folks homecoming for about three uh, three or four games and so we we understand that you get a kind of a chip on your shoulder and so we, we're, we're expecting Bluefield to come in Bluefield State to come in with a chip on their shoulder and we've got to be focused and uh, locked in and uh, so I, I'm, I'm anxious to see how our guys respond uh, coming off of a big win and then a big loss how do our guys respond and uh, hopefully Hopefully, we'll step up to the challenge. Well, hopefully, you'll respond better than you did coming off the big win because that led to Absolutely. the big loss. Um, and it just reminds me, you know, there are so many things going on on game day. No doubt. Um, you got recruits on campus. You've got bull. You've got logistics. You got everything. You're just trying to coach some football and you know call some plays. How are you able to, to stay focused? I guess preparation. Make sure everybody's going to be doing all the things you can't do that day. You know, there's an old saying in, in football coaching and it's in it's in a saying in other other uh, industries as well but we always say by thursday after thursday's practice we, we always say the hay's in the barn uh, because most of your preparation most of your practices and things like that have been that they're done and uh, so you've got your plan and uh and then uh, at that point obviously we have walkthroughs we have meetings after that but uh but we've done the heavy lifting and now it's just a matter of uh, putting that game plan to work, and uh, obviously during the game uh, we'll have to make adjustments as we go, and uh, and, and hopefully our guys uh, will be able to do that. And, and as coaches, that's something that's a big part of our job as well. But uh, that's 
that's kind of part of the deal. So we know on, on home games you're going to have recruits. You're going to have all, mm. a, lot, a lot of things going on, and it's just part of part of college football. That's that's the way it goes. And, uh, yeah, there's some times where you, man, I'd just love to coach this game and not have to worry about all the other things, but that's that's part of it. And uh, and that's that's what makes it fun. I mean, it's, you know, I think any, any – person that's a competitor, uh, whether you're a coach or a player, you like to be in the middle of it, in the arena, and uh, and I think our guys enjoy that, and I, I, I know our coaches, and I, I surely do. I think it's there's a great energy involved with a football game, and to be part of it is, is a lot of fun. It's a blessing. Well, Coach, i got to ask you one question I've been dying to ask you since we started talking about this. Do you ever come up with plays in the middle of a game on the sideline that you have maybe not completely rehearsed before? Is there any of that so-called draw it up in the dirt that does go on? So I would tell you that on our staff, we've got guys that, that are for that and against it. And I, <laughs> I, am, uh, I, have, I, have, I am not against it. And so uh, there are some times where we'll see something and say, hey, we could do this. And, um, and so uh, we've got some other coaches on our offense that kind of are the opposite uh, end of the spectrum. And, and they're, they're, they've got some valid points because we've got young guys still. And, and I think over the long haul, we do what we practice the most, the best. And right. so to be able to throw curveballs at this group is, uh, is, is probably a little more risky than it will be in a year or two. But, uh, but you know, when, when people are giving you new things, uh, you've got to have some things to go to. And so hopefully you can kind of prepare and, and have some answers built into your plan. But sometimes you got to draw it up on, on the sideline. And, and uh, I think we've got smart guys. I think Jaquan Lynch can handle it. And uh, so we'll kind of see how it goes. But that's part of the game, you know, figuring out what you can do, and what you can't do, and what you should do. Absolutely. It's a chess game out there. Well, I tell you, the things you can learn chatting with Chip Hester here in his office – so join us next Tuesday for another edition with chatting of Chatting with Chip. We'll see you then.